past the past of QVD because I ain't really, you know, I didn't really know of, I didn't really know or heard of QVD until this Tupac situation. So yeah, I guess we about to um like dive deep into QVDs um before this before the Tupac situation. The reason for your empire and your empire going down because of the whole situation with Tupac. Exactly. He's the only one still balling. In this part of the video, Keefy D speaks out about how good his life was prior to meeting Puff Daddy. Let us, in this video, talk about the story of this gangster who is currently under arrest and who calls the killing of Tupac the biggest case in the history of Las Vegas. So what they got you for, man? Biggest case in uh, Las Vegas history. As Keefy D said in his book, he admittedly lived most of his life as a gangster, a real gangster that did all the shit that real gangsters do. He had risen the ranks to become a major shot caller for the notorious Southside Compton Crips. He was running a multi-million dollar nationwide drug empire. He was acquainted with Easy e and he had a lifelong friendship with Suge Knight, who now says, free Keefy D. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't testify, free Keefy D. They played Pop Warner football together for the Greater Compton Colts and the Compton Wolves back when they were 11 and 12 years old. Suge played on the offensive line as the center, and he was the running back in strong safety. Suge Knight's dad was one of the club's trainers. Suge's family owned a diesel truck company, so they were living that middle class lifestyle, driving nice vans and Cadillacs. Whenever they would want. Damn, look at Suge Knight when he was younger, bro. He was tall, he wasn't fat, you know, he has, he has, he has hair in his top of his head, and all that, bro. That was Suge Knight when he was younger. Suge's dad would invite the team over to their house to swim, eat hot dogs, potato chips, and Generally speaking, they were good friends. He also got to know Bubba Wop at a young age. Just so you can understand the relevance, this is the same guy who, in 1996, was driving that white Cadillac from which shots were fired at Tupac. According to Keefe's words, before the drug game got real big, people used to hijack trucks, carrying cigarettes and other merchandise. Bubba Wop was one of the best at doing it, catching a truck at least once a month. He had a Mexican fans out in Santa Fe Springs that used to give him $180,000 per truck. At the time, Bubble Up was one of the richest guys in Compton. Before moving to Compton, Keefe D's family lived in Watts. His family received a lucky break when his pops and uncle went to Agua Caliente Racetrack in Tijuana, Mexico. They paid six consecutive winning horses. Keefe's dad won $50,000 that day, which would be the equivalent of winning a million dollars in today's time. With the winnings, his parents relocated from Watts. Bought a house in Compton and two brand new cars. His mother was a dedicated housewife whose family came from Dallas, Texas. His dad was a former Marine and a strict disciplinarian who taught them good principles. His father's family is originally from Homestead, Virginia. There were 12 children in the family, six boys and six girls. In 1980, his mom passed away from colorectal cancer. He inherited this disease later in life, which almost killed him in 2014. Two of his brothers also passed away. His oldest brother died from leukemia, and the second died in a shooting in Compton. He became part of the Crips gang at the age of nine. One day, he was playing dice when his dad pulled up and asked him what he's doing. To which he responded, nothing, just playing dice. The response he got in return was, not no more, bring your ass on and get in his car. I don't want... You're out there, you understand me? I don't give you money to do it like that. His dad hadn't yet understood at the time that Keefe was already a member of the gang. Once, while playing dice when he was in eighth grade, one of the players thought that he was cheating. Keefe pulled out a 25 caliber pistol. The guy's brother was there and whipped out a bigger strap than him, a 45. They had all grown up together. So once the smoke cleared about 20 minutes later, they came to an agreement. One of Keefe D's elders said, never pull out a gun if you won't shoot. Back in our chair, back in our chair, back, back in our chair, yeah, back in our chair, knock on your friend. That's crazy, bro. It's, especially you know the nigga for 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 a minute, bro. Like that's crazy, bro. That is crazy. Why did Keefe D decide to become a gangster? As Keefe D himself said, gangs were rising in popularity, and he didn't want to feel like an outsider. And he needed to somehow protect himself. Generally speaking, you haven't heard anything new yet. To hear something new. And to be on track on the trend, you need to know about the YouGov website. YouGov is an internet page. Well, we will talk about how he was almost killed at a young age. He one day headed to a liquor store to pick up a few items he needed. As he was coming out of the store, he saw eight men with bats, poles, and sticks running toward the entrance of the store. He stood there, looking around, wondering who was about to get their ass kicked. Then it registered. There wasn't anybody out there but him. One of them knocked Keefe D out with a pole. 
and they kept beating him up until one of them said that they had to leave. He was literally seeing red from the warm blood that was streaming down his face and neck. The left eye was nearly closed shut. He was a bloody mess. He went back home, felt better, and decided to get revenge. Our video's protagonist knew where one of his attackers lived, so he quietly pulled up in front of his family's house. The shots simultaneously shattered the previously quiet block, the windows, and the door of the house. He continued blasting until the clip was empty. When he was getting out of there, he met the attacker's younger brother who begged him not to kill him. There were too many witnesses for him to do that, so he knocked him out with the butt of the pistol. The guy's head hit the concrete. Then, Keefe began beating him in the face, to the point that his friends had to calm him down and take him out of there. The beginning of his drug dealing acts took place when he was in the 10th grade. He participated in UCLA's Upward Bound program that was designed to help students graduate from high school and successfully graduate from college. KVD was one of their top students. They would stay at UCLA for nine weeks during the summer and spend random weekends there during the year. As part of the summer program, they would give them a $285 weekly stipend every Friday. However, KV knew that his friends could make that amount or even more in just a day. And that is why he also wanted to make more. He was selling weed that his younger brother grew to one of the baseball coaches. And one day, the coach gave him a bag of cocaine and said, can you sell that? He said, of course. In the end, Keefe D was able to start his own business with the money he had earned, and his business was thriving. But as you already know, with such businesses, it's very easy to end up in jail, which is exactly what happened with Keefe D. He was sentenced to four years behind bars. That moment, he was 21 years old. After getting released from prison, Keefe D naturally carried on drug dealing. He was delivering drugs it also looked like he, he was from the from the mob mafia or some shit like that. You gotta know what I'm talking about, bro. He got the black hat, the black jacket, the black shoes, all that shit, bro. Places all over the U.S. He lived luxuriously. According to Keefe's words, him and his people invested money in death row. And Boss Man also did the same. He owned a couple of houses in Suge Knight's neighborhood. Referring to his story again, Suge called Keefe D to talk about Easy e Everyone knew one another. Keefe D's brother went on tour with NWA because Eric and his brother sold dope. By the way, Keefe was also an acquaintance of Easy. Suge at the time also wanted to lure Easy e to death row, but Easy said, no, I'm sticking with Ruthless. After that, Suge asked Keefe to get Dr. Dre's number. The producer made the decision to leave Ruthless Records. At the beginning of the 90s, a client of his from the East Coast called Eric Bonzip Martin introduced him to Sean Puffy Combs at a party. They shook hands, and that was it. As Keefe recalls, Puffy had a little swag, but for him, Puffy was like a young kid. As Keefe says, Puffy was broke back then because he was just starting out in his career promoting talented artists. The first time Puffy and Keefe D started talking was when Puffy wanted to rent a car for Usher's music video for Can You Get With It. Keefe asked for $2,400 for the rental. However, Usher ruined the pay on the car because he was dancing on top of it. Puffy had to pay $4,400 instead. Back then, the Southside Compton Car Club was a well-off crib set with about 35 cars, jackets, plaques in a window, and everything. In the summer of 95, Zip came through the neighborhood and invited Keefe D to a party called the Beat Summer Jam, organized by Puff. Suge Knight was at that party. As Keefe D himself said, Suge was jealous of Puffy because everything was going well for him. In the summer of 95, Biggie's One More Chance was played out of every stereo. Suge asked him where he knows them from, and he said that, just like everybody else, he knows them from drug dealing. Then, two events took place, which led to the crumbling of the relationship between Suge and Puffy. This is the first event. You don't want to, won't have to worry about the Zayn producer trying to be all in the videos, all on the record, dancing, coming down from. The second is when Big J, Shook Knight's friend, was killed in an altercation between Death Row and Bad Boy Records at a club in Atlanta. Shook blamed Puff Daddy for the murder. Later, as Keefe said, a member of Bad Boy Records called him and said, Your boy, Big CEO, he's tripping. Obviously, this was in reference to Shook. Keefe responded to him saying, Just send me 40 to 50 tickets and we'll be in there deep at all your concerts. Puffy would give them tickets to be at their Bad Boy West Coast shows. They went everywhere with them. They'd meet up with them at the hotel, get the tickets, and go with them. Crips were backstage deep at most of those West Coast shows. Because Zip and Puffy were always in contact with him, Keefe always knew where Puffy was and where to go if something were to happen. According to Keefe's words, Puff was so scared that he hired ex Navy SEALs, wearing earpieces like they worked for the CIA. Nah, no, that's OD, bro. If that really happened, that's OD. The hotel room right next to his suite. According to Keefe D's story, Zip and Puffy met at a club and called him over. Then the following conversation took place. What's up, Keefe asked. I have a couple of problems I need to be handled. Big CEO and Pop, responded Puff. 
And Keefe enthusiastically said, that's not a problem. We can make that happen. In this conversation, and again, according to Keefe's words, Puffy offered a million dollars to kill Tupac and Suge Knight. What did Keefe think about Suge? For him, he was soft. He didn't care one bit about Suge Knight and his crew. That time, Keefe had some arguments with Suge and with Death Row in general. For starters, one of the girls from Death Row complained to the label's boss that her and her friend were beaten by Keefe D and his crew. Keefe told her, well, bitch, I'm not from Death Row. The entire conflict took place because at the time of filming a music video for Death Row, Keefe, who was present there, happened to accidentally touch the girl's ass while she was going down the stairs. The girl then said, it's an asshole from Death Row. And then, when Keefe's people and those from Death Row were going to be at the same club, Shook's car was shot at, and he thought Keefe D was involved in that. However, according to the gangster's words, that was not the case. Also, he had issues with Tupac because of those lines. Some Southsiders were up at the House of Blues on Sunset, and they ran into Tupac. He was up there with Big Sig from the Outlaws. One of the members of the gang went up and grabbed Tupac by the collar and pushed him against the wall and said, Man, you know what that Long Beach and Rosecrans stand for? As Keefe says, Pac thought that the guys from Death Row would protect him, but no one came to the rescue. Next, a fight took place that changed hip-hop forever. One of Keefe D's friends went to a mall where he came across their rival gang. They started beating him up, and then help arrived just in time and they beat them up in return. They took a chain with the Death Row logo on it. Orlando Anderson was present in that fight. According to the words of Napoleon from Outlaws, he claimed that a rumor circulated at that time Puffy was willing to pay $10,000 to anyone who would steal a Death Row chain. Puffy was saying we want to put the chain in, a, you know, in our video, and, and uh, that's why the guys try to snatch the chain. On the 7th of September, 1996, another fight took place between Tupac and Orlando Anderson. Pac wanted to get him to revenge for his friend. After Orlando was beaten up, Keefe D wanted to get back at Pac and should for this. For him, this was humiliating because for him, Suge Knight and the entire music industry in general was surrounded by fake gangsters, and he couldn't forgive the attack on his nephew. Plus, Puff had already offered a million dollars for the killing for these two. So, a few hours later, Pac was killed. What happened to Keefe D and the rest of the people in the car? Find out in the next video. Until then, I recommend you check... So yeah, bro, what y'all think about Keefe D, bro? Like, like me, like, he should not been, he should not been talking that much about, he, bro, like, that's why he's in jail, bro, because he talks too much, bro, like, you see what happens when you talk too much, bro, like, you should not be, like, you should not be talking too much, bro, like, now, you, now he in jail, and Daddy, and he, and he, blaming Daddy, he's, and Keefe D's saying that Daddy, like, 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 put money on Tupac's head, you know, which I don't know, I don't know what to think about that, but, so yeah, let me know what's your opinion, though, do y'all think Diddy has something to do with Pac's, Pac's death, do y'all do think Keefe D, like, did, did something to Pac, like, let me know what y'all think, bro, like, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, y'all know the vibes, we're just checking out you are.